Narrative acts differently in painting. It's like sculpture is not an internally native, a natural native narrative art form, okay? Whereas paint, say, movies are, okay? Um, uh, so, so with sculpture, it has this... It has this ability to evoke something, a presence, like a real, almost like a spiritual presence. I was talking to somebody recently. I talked. I think I'm an. I, I would call myself an animist. Uh, mm-hmm. Maybe not in the sense that people used it long ago, but I would call myself an animist. Like the whole world is animated to me. It's filled with some sort of eminence that I'm not sh- sure what it is. But sculpture is very good at doing that, right? Uh, uh, and this will get back to what we're, we were going to talk about with artists, right? Uh, and why I like people, people like, um, Anish Kapoor. Um, uh, so, so when I'm in the studio and I'm thinking about the, the way, the, the, the way in which the, the object that I'm working on will interact with the viewer. Okay. I try not to, I try to put any specific narrative out of my mind. Okay. Um, the, the temptation for anyone, just as you said, anyone who goes to a gallery, they're going to look for the narrative in it. You know, they're going to look for what's my narrative of the person who made it. And they're all, I mean, that's the biggest pitfall of all, in my opinion, because, because, because I make my things ambiguous enough that they wouldn't be able to figure out the object's narrative. Like they're not, they're not looking at it and saying, oh, this is, this is obviously yeah. Daniel in the lion's den, right? Yeah. Like I'm not doing, I'm not picking a narrative and applying it. So, so I do open myself up to, to a lot of, uh, a lot of speculation about my narrative in the making of it. Okay. Uh, but in terms of the object itself, I'm looking for ambiguities and I'm looking for ambigu- ambiguities of gesture or, or look, the, 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 the fact of the matter is that it's already an ambiguous situation. How many people would encounter a person in the nude standing there staring at you right yeah. on it it doesn't happen it's not it's already it's already a, a uh a, a, an odd situation that i'm putting people in right so i I've, I've already got to start like i don't have to you know in other words i'm not sculpting people sitting in a book chair reading a book you know <laughs> right. <laughs> which is a which is a quotidian experience people yeah. have it all the time you know it's a it's a fairly ubiquitous thing that happens yeah, I'm not. I'm not depicting people in that way. I'm depicting them. That's one of the reasons I like the nude because I I suddenly I suddenly strip them of any any kind of everyday experience that people would have with them. Okay, and, and I've the, also and really the only experiences we have with nude it would be with our parents, but then that stops our doctor and our lovers um, yeah. and crime. <laughs> like that's it. Right. Yeah. I mean, or, yeah. or film, right. Or, or, right. or maybe pornography, right. would be the, right. Only, right. the only real exposure we have to nudity in those contexts. And, and then art is a, is another one. Is another one. Um, yeah. yeah. And, and, and so, and two, and two of those examples are not direct experiences. Right. They're, they're mediated experiences. Exactly. So, right. so I, 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 the, that's a little bit of what I'm playing with is the discomfort you feel with this suddenly confronted yeah. with something that yeah. is is an unusual situation. Yeah. Um, and and so so that's the, I already have a starting point for the for the for the narrative element, the internally yeah. narrative element. Yeah. Not not external, but the internal nar- internally yeah. narrative element. Um, and so I'm not thinking about a like when there when it's something when something occurs to me, an object to put in the hand. Or a particular gesture to, to give. I'm not thinking about, oh, this is what this person did. She did this and it meant this and then they did this, right? I'm not thinking about that at all. In fact, I am I consider myself the first viewer of the piece. I'm oftentimes just as confused as other people. Right. I'm saying, and, I, and I'm thinking, not, not confused, that's not, I'm intrigued. Intrigued is a better word. I'm just as intrigued. I think, well, that element goes with that element. Why does it work? Why does it work? What is it saying? What is it, you know? And so, so that's how I do it. I, 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 I automatically create conditions for myself where I, I, I remove the temptation to add a, a narrative uh, component that would be, that would be too identifiable. Right. Right. That's it. I mean, that's it. Once, once, you, once you've done that, you, you, immediately, you immediately create space for yourself. Uh, no, no, having said that, there's there's an opposite to everything, right? So what I just said is that there's, 
obviously a way in which you could create a quotidian experience, take a quotidian experience, and by the application of some of an, art, an artistic method, make that quotidian experience feel new. Yeah. And well, suddenly, you know what, and can, suddenly, can disp- I, and suddenly displace the, and suddenly displace what everything, all the assumptions people have about that narrative, which right. is kind of what you do, actually, in some ways. It, yeah. Well, in, way, yeah. It's, in the drawings, especially in the drawings, especially. Yeah. 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 But yeah. you know, I'll give you a sculptural example of that that I that I witnessed, uh, uh, and, and in the figurative sense, was at the African American History Museum, where mm. um, in in that space uh, they have depictions of of slaves. And they had and their life size bronzes, and one of their uh, their concepts was to recontextualize the depiction of a slave mm-hmm. character, um, mm-hmm. and and basically what they did in certain circumstances is they made them in, instead of having the usual like after being whipped or toiling in the field or something like that, right. they had right. them up on a pedestal, like their feet were, you know, mm-hmm. about chest height with you. Mm-hmm. They were standing up, looking like human beings, yeah, and and great. and they had some of the signifiers of mm-hmm. to, to narratively get you to immediately understand like okay this is a same character, right. Um, right. but recontextualizing it like that was I mean it, to say that it was a new experience I mean this was one of these visceral experiences you have because you realize like it's it's like part of the matrix mm-hmm. had been revealed where you're like oh I've been you know, uh, uh, thoroughly brainwashed visually yeah. right. my entire life. And just right. this moment of right. seeing this thing is this right. massive peeling back of the matrix where you're like, yeah. whoa, I had no idea how visually brainwashed I had been. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, so that's it. I mean, that one's a little bit less ambiguous than what you're talking about. Sure. Um, sure. But it, it operates in that same space where the viewer, the relationship of the viewer, the posture, the gesture, um, mm. all of these things they, they they reflect back on the narrative that you have in your mm-hmm. head and the visualization mm-hmm. of that narrative that you have in your head yeah, and right. and the fight that your brain has in that moment the the whatever you want to call it like the dislocation of neural pathways is mm-hmm. so intense at least yeah. for me um that well isn't that you know, I mean, in, a, in a way that's a great way of describing it in a way isn't that what all good art does it it, it upsets the viewer's presumptions right yeah <laughs>